What's happening, everybody? Hey. Happy 4th of July. Uh, I'm sure that you all have huge plans to light fireworks and all of that jazz later, right? Yeah. Okay, guess not? <laughs> it's the only thing on your docket for today. Um, let me just tell you, let me, I got to first say this. Be careful the rest of the day. My mom one time told me we went, you know, like every family here, we went across the border and bought some illegal fireworks that you're not supposed to have. Tom, how are you going to get up from that chair? Come on, man. Hey, you looking good, brother. I can tell you right now, if I get in that thing, you know how to carry me out. And uh, we went and bought some illegal fireworks and all that jazz, and uh, my mom said, you're not supposed to, don't, you know, don't play with those. They're not toys, whatever. Well, it was snowing, and uh, we had this sliding glass door on the basement, on the bottom of the house, and I was sitting inside the house lighting fireworks with a match, and I would throw them out in the snow. So I lit one, threw it out, and it made this big explosion, and I lit the next one, threw it out there, big explosion. I lit the third one, and the match started burning my fingers on the other hand. And I held on to the firework and threw the match. <laughs> These two fingers were black, burnt up for weeks. So let me just tell you, the rest of the day, be very careful. If you're going to light a firework, use a lighter. <laughs> That's your uh, per public service announcement. You know, I think uh, it's amazing to be gathered outside to, together today and all that. And I, I think that uh, with all of the bad and the different stuff that's happened with COVID and the pandemic, all of that different stuff, I think one of the really good things to come out of that is we've been taught that the church is, is not just this dome-shaped building but, but the church is all of us individually that we can, uh, it's taught us that we can, that worship can look different and what we do and how we do it can be different and we can be okay with that. I, I think that that's one of the great things in why we can come together today and have a, a service outside and celebrate uh, Independence Day. Anybody know why we're celebrating Independence Day? Everybody's like, I think it's just for fireworks and cookouts. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody know? Just say it. Freedom, right? That's right. Uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed uh, in uh, by the Continental Congress on July 4th, 1776. And uh, we kind of celebrate that fact. It was drafted by uh, a guy that's uh, very near and dear to this area. Anybody know who it was? Thomas Jefferson. You probably, if, if you've been to grade school, maybe, maybe this is a good reminder, you've been out of school for a while, um, but you've probably heard this part. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these things are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? And all of that sounds amazing. Maybe, maybe you're sitting there and go, Thomas Jefferson must have been a God-fearing man. Let me just tell you, that is far from the truth. While Jefferson did believe in God, he also denied all the miracles of God, including Jesus being God himself. He, he denied, and even in his own personal Bible, he would go and mark through all the miracles in Scripture. He didn't believe in the resurrection. He didn't believe in atonement from sin. I think Jefferson was on to something, though. He had this belief that there was a God and that these things were right and good. And I think as he pins those words, he's on to something, but he just doesn't take it far enough. He says, look, we're all created equal. That is true. 
we're all equal. Genesis chapter 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. You know, when I, when I stop and just take a look, uh, I used to be, um, I've had a lot of different pets in my life. And uh, a lot of weird pets. Courtney and I had ferrets at one time. We fed, I had a I had an eight foot iguana at one point. It's it's really weird. I had a snake until it bit me. Um, you know when I look around at the animal kingdom, there are all these different types of lizards, right? Like you got this iguana, who's this amazing green thing that has this spiky back and this long tail and then I look at a Komodo dragon who has, is black and has this uh, callous skin on its back. You look at a, a toge gecko with this bright teal with amazing orange spots. They're all different, they're all unique, but you know what they all are? They're all lizards. I think that's the exact same place we find ourselves today. Yes, there are people who are white, there are people who are black, there are people who are Asian, there are people who are Hispanic. But you know what they all are? They're all human, created in God's image. Our country seems to really struggle with this idea right now. Secondly, he would say that we are under an equal condition. We all have the exact same condition which is called sin. We all have sinned and fall short of God's glory, Romans chapter 3 says. We find ourselves in this condition called sin. Again, back on equal playing field. Doesn't matter if you're white, you're black, you're Hispanic, you're Asian. I don't care if you're the richest person on the planet or the poorest person on the planet. We all got the same problem. It's called sin. I think one of the problems that we have is that we're so focused on me. We're so focused on us that we miss all of the people that God has put around us. We miss all the unique attributes to those people around us he went on jefferson went on to write about we should all we're all provided or endowed which just simply means provided by a creator these certain things among those life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and, and i think again jefferson was on to something but he didn't quite take it far enough Life, yes, we're all given life by our Creator. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Life has been given only by God Himself. And folks, we should protect life at all costs. We acknowledge the fact that every single person on this planet that has life is precious. I think that this is very true, not only of the lives that are on this planet, planet currently, and that includes every life, even the life inside a mother's belly. Life is precious. Liberty. Life, liberty, this is another word for freedom. Jefferson was writing about freedom from slavery. And I think if we take that a step further this morning to say not only that, but freedom from that current condition that we all find ourselves with sin, we find freedom from sin in Jesus. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, It is freedom, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly 
in love. While our condition is one of sin and slavery, Jesus came and lived and died and was resurrected that we might be set free. <laughs> Lastly, the pursuit of happiness. We all desire to be happy, don't we? We, we desire to enjoy the things and people around us. The problem is that happiness is situational. Depending on the situation depends whether I'm happy or not. If it's 90 degrees and I can sit in a John boat and catch bass all day, I'm happy. If it's 90 degrees and I'm holding on to a 600 pound stump grinder, I'm not happy. You see, it's situational. We should not just be focused on happiness, but take it a step further and be focused on joy. First Chronicles chapter 16 says this, for all of the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Joy comes from one place, a relationship with the Father, knowing that our condition has been healed, knowing that you can always have joy. Let me just close with this idea. I love this country. I believe it is one of the greatest countries, if not the greatest country on our planet. This country is filled with life, freedom, and happiness. Where else on the entire planet can you experience all the things that we have here? While I deeply love America, this land is nothing in comparison to the land that God is preparing for us all in eternity. That land that God is creating will not just be focused on life, but eternal life. Not just on freedom from slavery, but freedom from sin. Not just happiness, but in that land, my joy will be complete. We have got one of the greatest messages on the entire planet in Jesus. We need to share it not only with our neighbors here, but every single person we come in contact with, because we're all equal. Here in just a moment, I'm going to pray, and then uh, you guys can start coming up and taking communion. And uh, after that, I'll take a few minutes for that, and then I'll say something, and we'll open up, and then you guys can come down and get food and stay as long as you want, leave as early as you want. It's up to you. There's a Christian artist by the name of Big Daddy Weave. And I, I'm, I, lo I love his music. He's got this one lyric in a song called Neighborhoods. And it goes like this. When I say my last farewell, please don't forget to tell them that I'm not really dead. I'm just changing neighborhoods. Father God, we thank you for this country. We thank you for the freedom that we do have to come and worship together, to be able to blare the name of Jesus across speakers that might be heard. What an amazing place we live, Father. And Father, while we are grateful for freedom, for the men and women who've sacrificed 
dearly that we might have freedom. Father, we thank you first for your amazing example of what that sacrifice looks like in Jesus. We thank you for Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection that we might have freedom from sin. Father, it is our hope and desire that you be praised not only today, but for all of eternity. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We thank you for your amazing love for us. Father, continue to allow us to celebrate that each moment of our lives. It's through the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen.